All right, you guys, before we get going, I'll just say, uh, if this is any of you guys, you need to check with, um, check with Emily. So Sierra, Michaela, Ralph need to talk to Emily um, this week, as in like tomorrow, because she's leaving for her wedding. So uh, about organizing filters, extra materials, and lab space stuff. Uh, Juliet, Steven, Josh, Walker, you guys need to, or same thing, organize your filters, do that stuff. Um, let me talk to those guys. Uh, Sammy needs to organize sand and clear out lab space. And Emily and Jessica, something about materials, I don't know what that is, but clean out lab drawers. So if you guys need to get with her about closing out um, lab stuff. All right, we're going to talk some logistics today, and then we'll talk about uh, stuff that's upcoming and things about Sage and all that good stuff. So I've emailed this, so you guys all have a copy of this. If you lose it, it's all good. Um, and then the Excel sheets that we'll talk about in a second. So the, you guys all have these in your email. I got it earlier today. Um, but let's talk about this. So final closeout for capstone. Final closeout for capstone. So when we're done, you guys need to give me all of your stuff to go in the archive. So that's due at the end of the semester. If, we, if you guys first come to me with this stuff at the end of the semester, you will be very sad and very stressed out because you will most likely have it screwed up. So what we're going to do instead is I'm giving this now. I want you to pull all this stuff together. I understand you're still working on your thesis and stuff, but pull the bulk of it together, pull all of it together. You're going to bring it to class next week. I can take a quick glance at it. And I can just take a quick glance, 30 seconds, say, yes, this is good. Oh, no, this thing needs to be like that, right? So we can, I can tell you ahead of time so that when we get to the end of the semester, you just bring your flash drive or whatever it is, we copy it up, boom, 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 we check, and we're good to go, right? So we're trying to minimize stress. So you guys are going to do this this week, get it together this week, bring it in next week. So let's talk about what I mean by that. So, um, so you can read through this whole thing when you have a, a second. But suffice it to say, um, you need to follow the naming conventions of all these files. Again, this, is, this stuff's going to go in the archive. It has to be correct exactly the way I have it here, OK? Except for the last name. That's where, that's where your last name's going to go. So not, not everything capitalized, not capitalized, it, it, it all has to be consistent. Um, so let's talk about what these things are. So you're going to give me, um, when we're done, a bunch of files. Uh, most of you will have most of these files. A few of you will have all of these files. So let's talk about them. The first one is your data. So in my case, it's going to be called the SRM 499 underscore data Anderson S 2019, and it's going to be an Excel file. I've sent you the template for that. We'll talk about that in a second. So that'd be one of, like on my flash drive, that would be one file. Next file would be my references. Um, uh, I use EndNote, so when I say export my references from EndNote, that file format is .enl. If you guys use Zotero or anything else, it's whatever that proprietary format is fine. Or you can send all of them have the ability to export citations to use with anybody else's program. So most of those uh, spit out those things. It's usually a thing called a RIS file, but they export that usually as a, as a text formatted file. So it doesn't matter. As long as I can read it, it's good. Okay, so these are all your references that are in there. I get it that you still might be working on your thesis. You might add some at the final version, but you can at least spit that out for me next week. Okay, so we have our data. We have our references. And then, for almost all of us, there might be one or two people that don't have maps, but almost everybody else is going to have some kind of map, even if it's just a location map. If that's you, you need to give me that data. So in this case, this blue thing represents a folder. So I'm going to have a folder with all my GIS uh, files in there. Some of you guys use ArcGIS. Some of you now are using Arc Pro. So it's whichever, whichever you guys are using. If you're using Arc, Arc Pro, right, you can, you can zip it all up into one package, right, just like one file and give me that, that's okay. If you're using uh, Arc uh, GIS, right, you need all, I need to get all the different separate things. Regardless 
of the form of the file uh, of the program that you're using. <coughs> Uh, I just want to remind you guys that you don't manipulate Esri files with the with the file navigator, right? You use you use the program itself, you use our catalog, something like that. You can't be messing around with these things. I also encourage you guys to make sure you use relative pathway names. Right? So you guys are more competent on Arc Pro than I am, but at least with Arc GIS, that's a little tick box you do in the settings to make sure that it's okay if it's not in the C drive now, if it's in the D drive or something like that. Um, and so if I'm using, you know, if I'm using uh, ArcGIS, I'm going to have my map document and then all the associated layers. And so in my case, I would have maybe a couple of map documents, let's say, and then I have another folder which would contain all my TIFFs and layers and all that stuff. More about that in a second. Um, and then uh, your final poster, right, which is going to be a file, it's your PowerPoint file. And then your final paper, which is going to be a Word file. And for some of you, that might be all you have. Others of you, you will um, maybe have collected multimedia to for your data collection. Maybe that's an ROV video. Maybe that's a DEM um, or, 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 or uh, drone footage that you use to create a dem maybe that's acoustic audio recording files maybe it's camera trap images whatever it is so you might have some some addition to those files not everyone does but if you do all of those need to be properly organized and labeled and put in a folder that says multimedia okay uh, so again i can throw that into the archive and if someone is going to do a camera trap study 10 years from now and is trapped in the same place, maybe they have a different protocol for determining if, if we encountered a critter or not, or something of that nature. They can go back to your original data uh, 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 image files and redo the data. Maybe you're doing an ROV study and they're gonna use a different method for, for assessing fish or something, right? This way, all of that data is protected and somebody can use it on into the future. But you may not have a multimedia file. The rest of this, yeah. So next week, I want you guys to bring stuff on flash drives. It could be just a couple of them, just you know, oh, to, to, to the idea. But when we go to do it for real, I'll actually give you guys a link. You can upload it ahead of time if you want. Okay. Like, right. Like, hey, no, no, I'm with you. I'm with you, I'm with you. But for next week, bring stuff on a flash drive so we can skim it really quickly. So I'm not looking to download it next week, I just wanna, you, in fact, you can have it on your computer, we can open up on your computer and I can look. But please do have like a stuff all contained so we can, so we can glance it. Um, anyway, the rest of this is just sort of some how-to stuff for, for how, to, how to do these things. Um, the one thing I wanna flag is, um, is, we'll talk about metadata in a second, but let's start with GIS. <coughs> So your GIS files have to be proper, have your metadata properly tagged. We'll talk about the external metadata stuff in a second, but within your GIS, all of your label, all of your layers need to say what they were, right? So when they were collected, who collected it, maybe you collected it, maybe you got it from USGS, whatever, right? So it's okay if you didn't collect it, but we just, it has to have projection, the, the date, um, you know, collected or modified, all that kind of stuff, right? All the metadata has to be in there. So in a second, we're going to talk about um, how we're going to record that. But again, within your GIS framework itself, within the system itself, those layers and maps and stuff need to have that embedded in the proper section. Something that most of you guys probably have not done, something most of you guys don't do, something that when you guys download stuff off the web, you're like, oh my God, I can't tell where this came from. Because those guys didn't do it, you guys follow best practices, you guys will properly meta tag all of your, all of your stuff. Cool? All right, so uh, uh, note that the stuff I emailed you um, includes two files, includes two Excel files. So one is a GIS one and one is a, um, 
a data one. So let's take a look at those. Okay, so this one is our GIS guy. So even though you've even though you're giving me these GIS files that should be properly tagged, want to be able to read it outside of your GIS program. So the easiest thing there is this Excel file. So you will all take this, change the name of this file to whatever the correct name is with your last name, uh, the correct naming convention with your last name, etc. Then you're going to go and have a look. There are two tabs in here, right? So we have this one GIS file layers and this first one that says data description. So you're going to come in and you're going to update this for your particular study. So metadata file for, and you delete the X's and you put in whatever your, whatever the name of your study is, right? Okay. You go over here, the author, that's you, your email, cell phone, et cetera, contact, your perpetual contact, not your CSUCI email, unless you're intending on joining the alumni association or something, right? And again, the idea here is somebody opens this 10 years from now, they can't figure out what you did, they want to be able to reach out to you and ask you, hey, did you, did you really sample Montana? Or was it actually San Luis Obispo County? Because this thing is showing in Montana, like those kind of things, right? So your contact info, the date you created it, if you change it after then, et cetera. And then again, these things should all be pretty explanatory. You take a stab at it this week and we can look at it next week if you have any questions. Project title, same thing. Data description. This is this is uh, this is a uh, 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 Tory Pine seedling points that I collected, you know, in in uh, fall of 2018 to, to what uh, you know, whatever the heck it is. Um, you're gonna fill these guys all out. Um, if the data was created or collected by you, yes. If not, that's fine. Maybe it's both. Maybe you, some of this data was collected by other people, some of it's by you, that's fine, just let us know. And then on and on down. Okay, so we, we fill out all these things. As I fill them out, I'm gonna change this yellow to clear, because I'll have filled it out. If that particular question doesn't apply to me, I'll put N slash A for not applicable. And then I'll jump over to this tab, which is where the data is gonna hide. So this is gonna describe all the, the key layers that I use to generate my figure, right? So one of these layers might be whatever you named it, you know, um, a Tory Pine seedlings. And I'm going to fill out all those things. What in you know, the author, the datum, all that kind of jazz. Next one, maybe the next one is, uh, uh, I don't know, water features on Santa Rosa that came from the National Park Service, etc. Right. So this, by quickly opening this up, we can say, hey, this this person used these this data. I got it. Okay, cool. Maybe I, I want to use that in a future study. Maybe I don't. Does that make sense? That's the first one. The next one is very similar. I don't know who Frank Pendleton is. Oh, boom. Probably shouldn't have hung up. Okay. Uh, next one is. Here. Is your data data. So your actual data. Now. You guys all have data. You guys have all been organizing your data. You've all, all been analyzing your data. Many of you started with a clean data sheet, but then the last couple weeks you've been panicking over your poster and freaking out about this. Now you're trying these regressions. You're summing this and whatever. I don't want all of that messy stuff. I just want your original data. Okay. So let's take a look at this first uh, page, which is data description. So just like before, right? Check it out. Boom, 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 boom. Right. Similar things, name of the study, your author, all that contact stuff, right? Very similar to the last one. Then I have a tab here that says data. Everybody will have at least one tab because everybody has at least a little bit of data, right? And you can have all your data on a single tab here. Maybe the way you've organized it, you have cover over here and I have individuals over there. So I can insert several tabs. I can insert whatever, you know, one for this variable and one for that or what have you. The ideal would be have them all on a single data sheet, but it's fine if you want to have multiple. The raw data is going to be on here. So as much detail as is needed should be populated in the top column. The date, the full name of the site, the full species name the units of measurement. 
So it shouldn't say temperature and then number, it should say temperature and then, you know, Celsius or Fahrenheit. It shouldn't say, it shouldn't say distance, it should say distance in meters, that kind of a thing. Again, the idea is someone that hasn't been spending months and months and months with your data opens this up a decade from now and can, with just a minute or two looking at it, they can tell what you did and they could, they could get your data. They could either add your data to some future comparison or they could reanalyze your data with some new technique that now is all the rage a decade from now, right? Does that make sense? So if you guys have all these summary statistics and means and, and standard deviations and things like that, that's fine, but I want a clean data sheet. If you want to give me your very fancy, cool table you made of all your summary stats, that's fine. Put it on a different tab, right? We want a clean data so someone can open this up tell exactly what it is. Does that make sense? So you're going to down, so you've already gotten these two sheets in your email. You're going to go and you're just going to assemble them and, and put, stick it in here. Some of you, you can just copy and paste your data sheet in there. Probably a lot of you will have to clean up your data sheet a little, add a little more clarity, that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Questions about that? Okay. So, um, Right, so that's the stuff you're gonna, you're gonna do. We're gonna do a trial submission next week. You're not gonna really submit it, but you're gonna bring in all the stuff next week on a flash drive and we'll take a quick gander at it or have it on your computer so you can show me really quickly and we'll spin through that. But do make it. Don't say, oh yeah, I have my, I have my references here. Make every single one of those files, trust me. It, it, you need to go through the process and, and do it now rather than the panic of the day stuff is due. Okay, you guys can read through the rest of this at your leisure. Um, next, what I've given you guys is, um, as we're migrating on into writing our thesis, some, some just reminders. So the components, title page, um, uh, and then with each, of the, with each of the things, I have a little, in maroon, a little question. So to double check, hey, did I really do it right? Hey, did, is this, Am I really getting at what the point of this section is? Can I, can I answer all these questions with what I've written? That kind of thing. In addition, in this file is your template for what every single person's thesis will start with, whether it's individual or group or whatever. You guys are all gonna copy this. So this first page is a title page. It's gonna have your title of your project and then it's gonna say an environmental science and resource management capstone project by your name or by the, all the names of your group members, if that's the case, if you're in a group. Um, and then it'll say submitted in partial fulfillment of the requirement for an environmental science and resource management, Bachelor of Science degree from California State University Channel Islands, and then the date that we're submitting it on. Okay? That's the first page. After you type in this date, do a page break, and then you'll start at a clean, clean uh, uh, other page. Um, and then at the very end here, I just remind you what the formatting should be like, which is our default ESRM writing guide guidelines, but that's, you know, one inch margins, Times New Roman, 12 point font, et cetera. Um, uh, single spaced. So uh, when you're showing it around to your friends to edit, it's usually easier if you make it one and a half spaces or something like that, so easier for people to write comments. But when you get the final version for me, just make them single spaced. They're gonna be long and we don't need to kill more trees, right? So, so single space is what I'm looking for. You guys can um, double, you know, print it on double-sided uh, paper, all that kind of good stuff. So, so we can minimize the, uh, the amount of paper products consumed. Does that make sense? Questions about that stuff right now? The logistics of the, the hand in of stuff? Okay, so you guys assemble that. Um, the one thing that we, I've not figured out because we've not done it yet is the, the, the group aspect of stuff. So this is really the first year we've done group projects. So I'm not entirely sure how that's gonna roll out. So for now, go ahead and, and do this stuff as I've just instructed. It's probably gonna be, you guys aren't gonna give me four copies of your thesis, right? You're gonna give me one copy of your thesis. Um, how we name that, I, I, at this point, put everybody's name in the title where the last name goes. If that just becomes way too cumbersome, we might have to go to some other convention like the first three letters of everybody's last name or something like that. But for now, just go ahead and fill it out.